What do you think is the value of you reaching out to a person you differ with completely? A Satanist, whoever else it might be, reach out to these people with some goodness. Perhaps Allah will guide them. And if Allah doesn't guide them, it's between them and Allah. Look at the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him. Allah sent him to a man who used to say, Ana a'la. I am the God. I am God. That's what the Pharaoh used to say. وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأُ مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَاهٍ غَيْرِ The Pharaoh said, O oh my people, I don't know of a God besides me for you all to worship. That's the type of man he was. But when Allah sends Moses to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun, Allah says to them, فَقُولَا لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيْنَ لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Go to him and speak in a soft way. Perhaps he might remember. Perhaps he might be more conscious of us. Or he might understand, he might fear, he might realize. So speak to him in a soft way. Allah is telling someone who is the highest of the time, the Prophet Moses, to go to the one who was the lowest of the time, and that is the Pharaoh. He was a tyrant. He was a killer, a murderer. He made it so many. He created disaster upon disaster. If Allah wanted, Allah could afflict him and done whatever he wanted. But Allah gave him a long time. And Allah did not tell Moses, go and kill him. No. Allah said, Go to him with beautiful words, loving, soft, kind words. You differ with this man so strongly. He's a mushrik of note, not just a mushrik. He has installed himself as a God besides Allah. But Allah didn't say go and kill him, go and harm him, go and swear him, go and call him bad names, go and say you are a kafir going to Jahannam. None of that was said to the Pharaoh. But we say it to people who are not as bad as the Pharaoh. And we are nowhere near the value of the Prophet Moses. Who are we and who are they? You see, we call ourselves Muslims. We speak in a more harsh tone to our brothers than the Prophet Musa was instructed to speak to the Pharaoh. Is your brother a little Pharaoh? Some of you might be nodding your heads. Yeah, he is. In our house, we call him Fir'aun. May Allah forgive us. <laughs> May Allah not let that happen. No matter what, let's be realistic. One day when the punishment came, it came. When Allah wanted the death of the Pharaoh, he died. Why do we have to kill people? For what? Why do we have to harm them? Remember, if you don't have the permission to go for the Hajj, but you do have permission to go for Umrah, which is the minor pilgrimage, then you should do so. And the more often or however many times you could go for the Umrah, it will always be beneficial for you, for your spirituality, for your religion, for your closeness with Allah. In fact, a narration says the minor sins committed between two Umrahs that you have fulfilled are automatically wiped out. And as for the one who goes for Hajj, the Prophet ﷺ clearly says he will come back pure and clean with all his previous sins forgiven. In fact, as pure as the day he was born. And we always have been told that it's even purer than that. Have you thought of it? Why is it purer than that? When you were born, you came with a slate. What was on that slate? Nothing, zero. When you go for Hajj, 
Your slate is not returned to zero. Only the bad is wiped out. What about the good? It stays there. So I wiped out all the, all the bad, but the good remains. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. Remember, whenever in your life you make tawbah, you return to Allah, you change your entire life from wrong to right. Allah says, if you do it for my sake, I love it so much that I will convert the bad that you did into good on the right side of the scale on the day of judgment simply because you changed your life because of me. May Allah Almighty grant that to us. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam sacrificed a lot, yet he was known as Khalilullah, the friend of Allah. Allah has proven to us that closeness to Allah has nothing to do with how famous you are, how popular you are, how powerful you are, how much wealth you have, how much strength you have, what your looks are like or your body, etc. Allah Almighty has proven that to us by sending the most beloved unto him, his friends and a chain of messengers and all of them went through struggles and he says to us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the prophets of his are the first ones who go through hardship and trial from their own people and various other sources and then the rest who are closer to them and closer and so on and so forth. So the closer you are to Allah, the more challenges you will face in your life. The closer you are to Allah, the more people will make your life difficult because Allah wants you to trust him fully. Let's go back to this history very briefly today. We still have a few weeks to talk about this inshallah. And the Hajj will probably be in the second week of June, this sorry, July, this particular year, 2022. So remember Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, when he was young, he grew up in a home that was not Muslim. But he always searched for the one deity who made him because he always knew deep down that the only one worthy of being worshipped is the one who made me, no one else, nothing else. And so he looked at the stars, he looked at the moon, he looked at the sun, he looked at other creatures of Allah Almighty, but he refused. He said, no, and these things, they are there, then they disappear, they are big, and then they become small and they are not there. The sun is huge and then it goes away. He says, no way. Don't be mistaken, he never ever worshipped them. He only considered and contemplated. That's what happened. But he didn't worship these creatures. He continued further and further until he says, وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ I have turned my face in dedication, in worship, in submission to the one who has created the heavens and the earth. And I will not be from among those who associates partners with him. Allah loved that so much. Are you serious? Subhanallah. Are you serious in that statement that you will only worship the one who made you? Are you serious that you will only worship he who made the heavens and the earth? Call him the maker, the creator, the nourisher, the cherisher, the one in absolute control of every aspect of your existence and mine and entire existence. Are you sure he is the only one you're going to worship? If the answer is yes, well, we have to test you because Allah says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَن يُتْرَكُوا أَن يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do people think it's okay and enough to just say we're believers and then they're not tested regarding that belief? Allah says we tested those before you in order to distinguish those who are truthful and those who are not. So what does Allah do? Allah Almighty begins to put in your path trials. Tests And each time there is a trial, what does it do? If you're a believer, it draws you closer to Allah. And you lay your trust in Allah and your conviction in Allah. How many problems have you and I been through in our lives? Say for example, how old are you? You might be 20, 30, 50. The older you are, the more challenges you've had. You might have had such massive challenges in your life where at that time you thought, I'm not going to come out of this. And today you're sitting like a king. Subhanallah. Am I right or wrong? There were times in your life when you probably thought, I'm so ill and sick, I'm not going to make it. And today you are healthy as fit as a fiddle, subhanallah. There were times in your life when perhaps you might have had a business disaster where you thought, I don't know how I'm, how I'm going to come out of this. And today you have 20, 30 people working for you, if not more. 
Has it not happened? So Allah shows you, hang on, the days are owned by us. Were they not days when things disappeared from you, when you lost everything you had perhaps? And Allah says, you're still alive. You have clothing, you have a plate of food, you're okay, you're surviving. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.